Hello everyone. Today we are going to see one of the important critics of literary criticism. As you know, father of who is considered the father of literary criticism, especially modern. So that is S. T. Coleridge. We are going to discuss about Samuel Coleridge. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. We are going to see. So this man is very famous. If you look at S. T. Coleridge, he has written various poems, which are very mystic one, complex one, philosophical one. He is very complex writer. Who is considered one of the master of romanticism? He was born in seventeen seventy and died eighteen thirty four. He has written various poems, and also he has written a literary work, critical work, biographia literaria. So where do you find? what is meant by poetry what are the functions of poetry how should be a poem how should be a prose how should be a composition so he has explained all these things and you know he has written in collaboration with wordsworth lyrical ballads in 1798 so which became very famous throughout the world so you can see samuel coleridge so when we talk about samuel coleridge to view his philosophical critical insights which are divided into two parts fusion of autobiography literary criticism religious and philosophical theory so especially he talks about two different approaches that we are going to see in chapter 13 part 2 which is written 1817 so what are those two points what is says the power of exciting the sympathy of a leader by a faithful adherence to the truth of nature the power of giving the interest of novelty by modifying colors at a imagination so he differentiates poem and poetry if you look at so there is difference between a poem and poetry we think that poem and poetry is same but no poem is a part of poetry poem is different from prose as we know it is a different poetry is also part it is also different from prose gives pleasure to leaders poem gives pleasures to leaders whereas poetry gives aesthetic delight poem form of verbal expression of poet's mind you find it is whereas poetry activity of poet's mind poem is smaller one as compared to poetry is a longer one large in size higher than a poem or collection of poems piece of poetry poem is a piece of poetry whereas poetry is a kind of literary form poem is a fundamental unit whereas poetry is collected works of poems so individual piece we call it poem when whereas collection of poems is we call poet for example poem it may be a sonnet and poetry metaphysical poet so it is a special kind of poetry we say so poem contains the same elements as we see in prose prose composition there is difference of object and combination for poetry the poet would make use of certain artificial arrangement of words with the help of meter so nothing can permanently be without contain in itself the reason so there should be reason logic the poem can be defined as the species of composition which is opposed to works of science with its immediate object pleasure not truth science is based on facts truth whereas poetry pleasure aestheticism he example of writing of plato taylor bible so various examples are there he has written essays biography literary is a kind of essay puts the distinction between poem 
what is a poem, what is poetry and what is a prose. This classical works deals with the seminal principles of literary criticism. So, words is, as Wordsworth has focused on romanticism, similarly Coleridge tries to focus the Sesti Coleridge Sudha Wordsworth Pramani Romanticism Bhaktit Bodhu, but he has some higher view. What he says that there should be some strictness in writing. He is not exactly as we see Wordsworth. His views are quite different. His friend is contemporary. So what are those we are going to see? So he has written Biographia Literia. But then in Biographia Literia how work Lele Light, which is very famous one. Which is considered the masterpiece in literary criticism. So it deals with seminal principles of poetical views, poetic criticism. Especially in chapter 13 we have, we are going to focus. It differentiates between the two concepts, fancy and imagination. So there are two concepts which are explained by Coleridge. He fuses philosophy and literary criticism to evolve his concept of imagination. According to Coleridge, imagination has two forms, primary and secondary. Primary imagination is merely the power of receiving impressions of the external world through the senses. It is the power of perceiving The objects of sense both in their parts and as a whole. It is the spontaneous act of the mind. The human mind receives the impressions and sensations from the outside world unconsciously and involuntarily reduces them to shape and size so that the mind is able to form the clear image of the outside world. So primary imagination is universal one, very common one. There is nothing which takes your efforts. It is possessed by all. Everyone has it. The primary imagination is sagayang kade jasta and the normal hai, common hai. Whereas the secondary imagination may be possessed by others also. Some may have, some may not have. Secondary imagination is a peculiar, more unique and difficult trait of the art is it is more active and conscious which requires will and conscious effort. The secondary imagination is that will efforts It should be acquired. It is not natural. It is not God gifted. So it works upon raw materials of the primary imagination. Secondary imagination works on primary imagination. It selects an order of the raw material and reshapes it into objects of beauty. It has a modifying power which strips them with a glory and dream that never was on sea and land. It is an active agent which dissolves, diffuses, dissipates in order to create. The secondary imagination is at the root of all poetic activity. It is a power which harmonizes and reconciles opposites. He calls it a magical, synthetic power. This power fuses the various faculties of the soul, perception, intellect, wit, will, emotion. So also it fuses in external with internal. It results into a poetic creation. Primary and secondary imagination both are significant. Both have degrees, levels. Secondary imagination is more active as compared to primary imagination. The primary imagination is universal. While the secondary is peculiar one, specific one. It is the privilege enjoyed by the especially artist or the poet. So yes, he wants to say, yes, there is a difference between fancy. Fancy means a sadharan patch. Patch. Upon figures that allow on one to dress, that is called fancy. And imagination, proper new dress what we create, that is called imagination. That upon imagination as a month. So there is a difference between fancy. Fancy is common one. It looks fancy. So just combining things as we feel to do or mix up. So there is nothing variety you find when we say 
fancy. Whereas the imagination, if you look at imagination has some special effect you find. What is that special effect that we are going to see? So the difference between two is the same as the difference between a mechanical mixture and a chemical compound. Sir, so, what is the mechanical mixture and chemical compound the difference I say? In a mechanical mixture, a number of ingredients are brought together, they are mixed up, but they are, do not lose their individual property. But they have individual properties in the mechanical mixture, they are mixed up, but they are not separated. They are individually. So, so, whereas in a chemical compound, when we say something H2 plus O is equal to H2 O, hydrogen plus oxygen, so it is mixed and there is combination and which you find the result that is water. So, they lose their respective properties, whatever individuality earlier it was, it is lost and fused together to create something new and entirely different. Here a compound is an act of creation while a mixture is merely a bringing together a number of separate elements together. So imagination creates new shapes and forms of beauty by fusing and unifying the different impressions from the external world. Whereas fancy is the kind of memory which brings together images. Fakta fancy hai ekatra images gusti ekatra individually separate apply this stuff. If you look at imagination, the unique it is and something new has been formed by mixing of different things, fusion. Explain the point by quoting them from Shakespeare's Venice and Adonis, if you look at it, you can find it. So finally, fancy is the drapery of poetic genius, but imagination is its very soul which forms all into one graceful and intelligent whole. Coleridge is the first critic who studies nature of imagination and examines the role of imagination in creative activity. So the concept of frenzy and imagination is characterized by greater depth, penetration and philosophical certainly. In this, is, this concept is very important for Coleridge, contributing to literary criticism. So further... He differentiates prose and poem or poetry as well as we have seen earlier. So both are not same, both are technically different in form, in syntax, in structure. So they have their own style is different. So the, in poetry you find rhythm, meter, feet, rhyme. Yes, it is a rhetoric one, musical one, sometimes it can be sung. So this is explained by Coleridge in details through his concept in details.